you know on this channel there are fun videos to do and then there are not so fun videos to do this is definitely falls into the not so fun uh, to do category especially when we're talking about a young driver Indy Lights champion uh, who in my opinion has been screwed over by his team especially so when this particular story has several similar beats to a particular story that broke very similarly in the year last year same team just a different driver so let's talk about the who and the why at McLaren uh, at the end of 2020 and look into 2021 and the who is Indy Lights champ from last year Oliver Askew who will be let go fired from Aero McLaren SP at the end of the season McLaren will be going in a different direction in 2021 whether that means they fill the number seven car seat or whether they cut back to potentially one full-time car just for Pato Award now there was some good news in the press release today for Oliver Askew fans even if there was or if it is just a glimmer of hope he will compete for the team at the St. Petersburg Grand Prix if and this is a big if he's medically cleared by IndyCar and as of right now he is not medically cleared to compete so you've got to imagine that an Elio Castroneves or potentially someone else is waiting in the wings to take that seat should Askew not be cleared though as of right now it appears like Askew will likely be cleared to race at St. Petersburg the why is the thing that has everyone talking right now why has McLaren let go their concussed uh, rookie driver who quite honestly did not get really much of a fair shake in this year's IndyCar series especially when there are quotes to the contrary from some of the team bosses namely uh, Zach Brown and Sam Schmidt well Racer Magazine Marshall Pruitt led some hints drop some bread crumbs if you will and uh, this is what they had to say Although no reason for the split was cited, it's believed an interview featuring quotes from Askew's management team, which questioned the team's commitment to Askew's well-being, caused embarrassment for both AMSP and IndyCar, did little to help the situation. And let's read those quotes because they come from Jenna Fryer's Associated Press article on the day that Errol McLaren SP released their own personal press release talking about why Oliver Askew would not be racing at the Harvest Grand Prix. This is the first quote. It uh, actually isn't a quote per se. It's not a direct quote, let me say that, uh, which states that Spire Sports plus Entertainment, which represents Askew, and was among those who pushed for the driver to see a doctor noted that Aero McLaren SP did not reveal that Askew was suffering from a concussion in its Thursday announcement he would miss the next week's race. The article continues, and this is a direct quote. Oliver clearly demonstrated his talent until lap 91 of the Indianapolis 500. And I hope this does not become another case study of why athletes do not tell their teams they are injured, said agent Jeff Dickerson. The reason that they do that is because more often times than not, they are replaced. In motorsports, there's always somebody to replace you, whether it was Dale Jr. or Oliver Askew. There is always another driver available. I hope this is not a barrier to progress for other drivers, especially young drivers afraid of losing their job, to notify the teams that they are hurt. I hope that the team proves me wrong because the good news is the kid has a head injury, has had a head injury for the past month, and has still run 14th in IndyCar. And boy oh boy, given hindsight, is there a lot to break down in those quotes. And I remember at the time, I mean, you can go back and watch the videos. The very first video where I talked about Elio stepping into that seat, by the way, something specifically mentioned uh, by uh, Oliver's uh, agent as something that would happen or could happen, that another driver, there's always another driver to be there. Well, Elio was that guy and appears to be that guy as things currently stand right now, possibly even for 2021. But there was a lot of confusion. The initial press release, as stated by Spire Management, uh, was that uh, he had uh, balance issues, 
they certainly sounded like concussion-like sy- symptoms. And I think even in uh, the video that I made talking not only about Oliver's injuries, but also talking about Elio, I described them as concussion-like symptoms. Now, at the time, as I was filming, editing, and uploading that video, this particular Associated Press article dropped, which confirmed the concussion. And it certainly makes me scratch my head, and I think it'll make a lot of you scratch your head, as to how Oliver apparently had a diagnosis, and yet the McLaren press release did not state that he had a concussion. That's very strange. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, Pure conjecture, pure speculation here. I mean, I guess if you're really cynical, maybe you would say they don't necessarily want it to be a concussion because that's a seriously legitimate medical excuse for performance issues that possibly would lead to a driver uh, being cut loose at the end of the season. That's exactly what we have seen happen here. And I think if you asked McLaren, they would probably tell you that this was performance related. And, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people are going to compare Askew to a ward, and even I've done that a couple of times this season. But I don't believe, let me put it this way, if Askew's results were exactly as they are in a normal 2020, so we're talking no COVID, we're talking no concussion, if he had run all 17 races and the results were like this, uh, I would say, of course, yeah, makes total sense. I mean, he wasn't pulling his weight on the team, there's probably a faster guy. The situation being as it is, uh, I believe Award got more test miles. Award obviously had more experience just going into the season. He'd run in two different seasons, albeit one race in uh, in 2018 and then just a handful of races in 2019. Uh, but that's more IndyCar experience than Askew had coming in. Couple that with the fact that with COVID, you not only lose uh, testing miles, which were cut, you also lose a lot of practice, you lose qualifying sessions. All of that is track time um, that would have gone to developing into a better driver. Uh, And certainly when you add the injury into that equation, which ultimately, I mean, I guess maybe you can blame Askew for the crash, at Indianapolis, or, or maybe you can't. I don't know. It, it, I've never been a race car driver on a restart at the Indianapolis 500. There's very few people who have been. Uh, but ultimately, you have a driver who was in pretty much the worst situation. And I think it's also worth noting that in that first race at Texas where uh, everyone had been coming off of quarantine and, um, you know, Askew outdid a ward. Apparently, I think he asked, outdid... Uh, pre-concussion, outdid award, or at least matched award, uh, three races all. You know, three races where award would be faster, three races where Askew would be faster. I mean, that's more or less 50-50 between the two teammates, one having a lot more experience and a lot more time in the car. So from this perspective, especially with Aaron McLaren SP coming out there and, and, you know, this really interesting strategy, which I thought at the time, and honestly, it did pay some dividends early on, you have two young drivers, two Indy Lights champions in there. I thought this was great. You were going to have a this uh, brand new team, or not, not necessarily a brand new team, but rebooted team, I guess you could say, uh, really going young, investing in uh, drivers that have uh, come up the right way, so to speak, in Road to Indy. I, I mean, this was a great thing for the sport to see two young drivers, Road to Indy drivers, getting right into a McLaren seat, and, and really having competitive equipment. There's no doubt about it. And unfortunately, uh, all of these factors together, you know, as it's, it's, it's so funny too, because that quote, especially about another driver filling the shoes, it was definitely a self-fulfilling prophecy. And honestly, if you look back through the decades, not even the decades, the last few years, uh, there's definitely a pattern emerging with Aaron McLaren SP and uh, honestly, Sam Schmidt Motorsports uh, 
and having these sorts of situations with drivers. I specifically was looking at the McLaren factor, but there have at least been three drivers pre Oliver Askew that have had issues uh, getting moved out of seats for one reason or another, really through no fault of the driver's own. The first one was the very first time McLaren returned in 2017. A lot of people forget this, but the seat that Fernando Alonso took was supposed to be Stefan Wilson's seat at Andretti Autosport. Wilson was strong darm out of that team and really, quite frankly, was taken out of a car that potentially could have won him the Indy 500 in 2017. Given a car for 2018, the unfortunate factor, of course, was that in 2018, Andretti Autosport was nowhere near as competitive as they were in 2017. Of course, Wilson still ended up leading laps in that race. But then you go on, and, and again, this is another one that people just kind of forget. Marcus Erickson was perfectly content to stay at that team for the next year. They did, uh, Aero McLaren SP uh, just did not continue contract negotiations with uh, Erickson. Erickson was on record at one point as wanting to say that team. Now, he certainly traded up uh, by heading to Ganassi, but I'd say that was the exception and not the rule. James Hinchcliffe is the obvious example. The, the sponsor was upset about his ESPN the Magazine uh, photo shoot, and uh, they used that uh, to get him out the door. And here's an ask you uh, antidote, I guess you could say, about or anecdote about the Hinchcliffe situation was Aaron McLaren SP last year was so high on Askew, they wanted to replace Hinchcliffe uh, with Askew for the final couple of races of the season, which Askew, to his credit, declined. It's, it's honestly really a shame that someone with that character level uh, kind of gets treated this way. Um, I, you know, it's almost, it feels like kind of the, the personification of the nice guys finish last sort of thing. But, uh, yeah, it, it certainly sucks, and there's no doubt about it. Um, and uh, I guess we'll talk positives or potential positives at the end of this video. So, assuming that McLaren does keep a second, possibly a third car, uh, I think certainly now you've got a, a perfect seat potentially for a Sergio Perez or an, an Elio Castroneves. I think those are your, probably your first two um, your first two go-tos if you're talking about a potential driver to go into that seat, to fill that seat, especially without an Indy Lights champion potentially to bring a million dollars into that seat uh, in sponsorship for the next year. I think it seems like McLaren is going to go old one way or the other, and we'll just have to see that how that works. So let's talk about some places that Askew could potentially go for next year. I think one of the places, and it's going to be dependent on sponsorship, there's no doubt about it, is Andretti Autosport. Uh, he won his Indy Lights championship there. You've got to imagine that Michael Andretti is on the the train that thinks that, that Askew is certainly a valuable driver. The question, of course, is going to be funding. Uh, the I guess the question for Hunter Ray, Ryan Hunter Ray, who apparently is the open seat there right now, would be sponsorship for Hunter Ray. If DHL doesn't come back, that seat is open. Well, if Askew can find some money, I would imagine that he would be one of the drivers that I think Andretti would be interested in in considering. But again, it's going to take money, and I don't know if Askew has a whole ton of corporate sponsorship just ready to come in and buy a top seat. Dale Coin Racing could be an interesting way, place he could go, especially if Santino Ferrucci comes in to Andretti and takes that 28 seat, which was rumored by Robin Miller a couple of weeks ago. But I think the, the seat that I would look at as a certain potential landing, or not a certain potential landing spot for Askey, but one that I think he could land at, would be, and it wouldn't be a full-time ride, but it would be something and it would be good, would be potentially doing the ovals in the Jimmy Johnson car. Assuming, of course, that Jimmy Johnson doesn't run those. But that would be a funded car. And also, add into the fact that Chip Ganassi likes Oliver Askew. In fact, Mike Hull is on record as saying uh, they were super impressed when Askew tested their car. So while it obviously wouldn't be ideal, you'd obviously want a young driver like Askew in for a full season. He clearly demonstrated some prowess on the ovals, and from an opportunity standpoint, uh, that would certainly be a very, very strong car for him to get in for the biggest race, the Indianapolis 500. I don't know. I'm sure this will be a very hot topic. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more IndyCar and Motorsports content, and I will see you in the next video.